Good morning, awesome fifth graders. Today is Tuesday, May 12th, 2020. We're going to take a look at 13 colonies. So we know in the beginning they came from Europe to Americas. So the vocabulary word for our first section is colony. So what is a colony? A colony is a settlement in a new area. The first English colonies in North America were along the eastern coast. A second vocabulary word is a colonist. What is a colonist? An English man or woman that moves to the new world of North America. Remember, fifth graders, our continent is North America. So there were 13 original colonies. Now, in Thursday Zoom, you guys were able to break into groups and uh, discuss and write uh, two facts you found about the 13 colonies. And as I told you in Zoom class on Thursday, I'm going to incorporate what you guys found out in this lesson. So here's some reasons why they decided to come to the Americas. Some Englishmen came for religious freedom from the Church of England. They wanted land and wealth that they couldn't have in England. They wanted freedom from the king's rule. They wanted a new beginning. They wanted adventure, and they wanted gold and riches. Other reasons why they came over. Self-rule. By 1735, there were over 6 million English men and women and children looking to the 13 colonies here in North America for a new beginning. The colonies. Each colony was unique in its characteristics. However, they are grouped together based on location, reasons why they were founded, and what types of industries that they have. So if you notice in our map, this area is not, remember, we're not talking about the United States, because if so, that would be Florida. But right now, this is a Spanish territory. Who was already here? The Native Americans. Very good. The Native Americans were already here. When the English came over, they started here in this area, and these are our 13 colonies. Now, I noticed that the Atlantic Ocean is where all the colonies started. Why do you think the Atlantic Ocean was the route that they took? So if you put a map in your head, you notice over this way is where you have Europe. That's why they traveled through the Atlantic Ocean. And we also know that Africa is over here. So this is how the slaves were able to come over the Atlantic Ocean. So. This is why the Atlantic Ocean was used simply based on location, the location. Now, the colonies are broken into three groups. New England colonies are Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Hampshire. Now, these are not states at this time. These are colonies. The middle colonies are Delaware, Pennsylvania, New York, and New Jersey. And the southern colonies are Maryland, which is where we live, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So those are our original 13 colonies. The New England colonies. First, our vocabulary word for the New England group. They were Puritans. They came to New England to escape the king who punished them for their religion. They governed a strict colony that was based around the Bible and the church. They had elected officials, but they were male. No women could serve in the Puritan government. Now, we talked about the Puritans in a couple of lessons before. So Jeffrey and Ashley, they were responsible for finding out about Boston. And Boston was not a colony. It was a city in the colony. And Mohammed and Zoe, they were responsible for finding out facts about Massachusetts. The sailors here made a great deal of money fur trapping. This is what fur trapping is, simply what it says, trapping fur. Other economic opportunities in New England were based around the sea, fishing, shipbuilding, and whaling. So obviously this is fishing, and obviously this is building ships. That is whaling. It's just what it says. They hunted for whales. The soil was rocky, and so the New England colonies were not known for their farms. It is very hard to farm with this kind of soil. So this is why they had problems with farming. Plus they didn't know what to do 
because they were not at this time very friendly with the Native Americans. Because remember, we talked about this before, they kind of stayed on the fringes. They didn't go in, inland much. So this is the kind of soil that they were working with and that soil is not good for farming. Kimberly, Victoria and Wasila, they were responsible for finding out things about New Hampshire and New Hampshire is part of the New England colonies. People in New England towns lived, worked and worshiped close together. The meeting house and the church were the most important buildings in the town. For a lot of us, that's still true today. Where we go to church or where we meet together, whether it's a synagogue or whatever, that's the most important buildings in our city or in our area or in our town. So that still holds true today. You notice you have the women on one side and you have the men on the other side. Now, Connecticut is still part of the New England area. Orense and Fedora, they were responsible for finding about Connecticut. The Puritans settled in Massachusetts. Because they were so strict, some Puritans left Massachusetts and founded the other New England colonies. The colonies of New Hampshire, Connecticut, and Rhode Island were friendlier, more tolerant of people differences, meaning people that were not the same of them, they were more tolerant. They were able to really deal or work with those type of people. In the New England colonies, the schools had one room, one teacher. So no matter what grade you were in, everyone was in the same room. They were very strict with children, and they was often whipped for punishment. Now, I can imagine me trying to whip one of y'all. I think our parent be up there, and we have a problem. You put your hands on my child. But in New England schools, that was the norm. They were very strict just like I'm very strict, except for I just cannot whip you. Their main subject was reading. So for me, that would be a problem because I love science and social studies. But in New England colonies, that reading was their main subject. Now let's talk about the middle colonies. The vocabulary word for the middle colonies is the bread basket colonies. A nickname for the middle colonies because they produced grains such as oats, wheat, and rye. So they were considered the bread basket colonies. Other vocabulary words, an immigrant. What is an immigrant? An immigrant is a person that comes into a country to start a new life. People came to America from many different places to start a new life. Another word is diversity. So what is diversity? A group of people from very different backgrounds. The middle colonies were an interesting place to live because of the diversity among the people. So for the middle colonies, Angel and Kenya found information about New Jersey. Peter and Kayla had information about New York. Anna and Chuck found information about Delaware. So these are three of the other colonies that were in the middle colonies. The settlements here were considered a royal colony. The king sent governors here to watch over the middle colonies. However, it was difficult for the king to have much power over the colonies, and many, many colonies were considered to be self-ruled, meaning they ruled self by themselves. It was not a group collaboration. Now, Philadelphia, Ronald Faith, and uh, Catherine were responsible for finding that information about Philadelphia, which is in the middle colony. The middle colonies were based on agriculture, farms that produced many types of crops. So you see this farm and it has different crops in its garden. There were also factories that produce iron. So we have another small farm here and we see these colonists producing iron. This is part of the reason that iron was brought over to the uh, Native American land because they didn't have that type of technology, well not any technology, but they would, did not have any kind of factories when they had their land because everything for the Native Americans was just pure. They simply worked and did everything they got on the land. So remember where they considered the bread basket colony. So these colonies, because they grew so many crops from baking bread. The land was lush and fertile. 
This is what a lush and fertile land would look like. The wagon was invented in Pennsylvania and used for trade. So when they wanted to get from one place to another, walking was not going to be an option when they had crops to carry. So they, a wagon was invented and they could put their goods on a wagon and travel more easily from one place to another. The Quakers are in the middle colonies. Remember, the Puritans are in the New England colony. The Quakers are in the middle colonies. This religion was a big part of life in the middle colonies. Although other religions were welcome, the Quakers came to Pennsylvania to escape persecution by the King of England. They lived in New Jersey, New York, and Pennsylvania. Now, let's take a look at the southern colonies. Vocabulary for Southern colonies is an overseer. An overseer is someone that was hired to watch slaves as they worked. Plantation owners hired overseers to watch the slaves and make sure they did their jobs. And another word is indigo. Indigo is a plant that was used in making blue dye. The farmers grew indigo plants. Indigo was an important cash crop for the Southern colonies. So in the Southern colonies, we had a lot of students in that group. Allison, Mo, Eric, and Joseph were responsible for Williamsburg. Now Williamsburg was not a colony, it was a city in a colony. Jose, Maylin, and Terrence were responsible for Maryland, which is where we live. Andy, Madeline, and Jimena, they were responsible for Georgia. And Taylor and Stephen was responsible for South Carolina. The sellers here, for the most part, wanted to make money. They brought their families and the slaves worked the land. Many sellers here were rich and owned large plantations. A plantation grows only one type of crop, very different from the farms of the middle colonies. If you remember, I showed you the picture of the middle colony where they had different types of crop. In the South, they pretty much only had one type of crop, crop, which was tobacco. Now, another southern colony is North Carolina, which is a manual, and I'm not sure who had this colony because you didn't put your name on it. Virginia had Lisette, Kaya, and Tolu. They gave us information about Virginia, which is part of the southern colony. The southern colonies was almost agricultural, meaning they farmed land. The plantations were abundant. Abundant means there were a lot of them. A large part of the workforce was African slaves. The plantations grew tobacco. Here's a picture of tobacco. It grew rice. This is rice before you see in the grains. And indigo, we talked about that vocabulary word, that blue dye. So these were the main types of crops that were grown in the southern colonies, with tobacco pretty much being the biggest cash crop, even though indigo and rice grew money for them as well. Facts about the Southern colonies. Slavery was legal. As crazy as that sound, it was legal to own slaves. Children born to slaves became slaves themselves. So this child, because his parent was a slave, that means this child would also be a slave, born into slavery. The slaves were imported from Africa. Now the word import is a strong word because you import things like crops. But in this case, in the South, slaves, which are people, they were also imported. Slave traders made a great deal of money. So they would import the people from Africa. They would make them do the work and they did not get the money for it. That's how they became very rich. They became rich off the backs of the slaves. So in the colonial life, Facts about the schools. Boys normally went to grammar school while girls went to dame school. A dame school is simply a, a school for girls where they teach them how to be women, how to take care of house, how to take care of children. It was not necessarily an educational school. There were no chalkboards, maps, or paper. School teachers were strict and were allowed to hit their students. Oh, here we go again. Oh, if I hit one of y'all, y'all mom, but you put your hands on my child. But back in the colonial days, they were allowed to hit their students or make them wear a dunce hat 
if they were bad or said the wrong answer. So here's an example of what a dunce hat looked like. So they would put that dunce hat on their student and they would make the student wear the hat. And I imagine they were probably very embarrassed and did not want to have a wrong answer. And they probably did not want to act bad. But remember, you see, he has this in his hand, ready to strike if the student was bad or had the wrong answer. Other facts about school. In the New England colonies, children were taught to read so they could study the Bible. Boys got to learn Latin and math and other subjects to get into college. Girls could learn to read, but they weren't allowed to go to grammar school or to college. In the middle colonies, most schools were private. Students also learned other subjects so they could get into college. However, the girls weren't allowed to attend unless they were a Quaker. So they had this type of system where the boys could do things educationally and the girls could not. If you were of the rich or the upper class, you were able to go to school. If you could not afford it, you were not able to go to school. So these are other facts about the, about the colonies. In their free time, they made new clothes. They had sleigh rides and they would ice skate. They had born raising, which is a social event where they were uh, built up a born. Let's say a, a, a person came in and they need a born, but they'll make it a, a, a big, big deal, a big gathering. So they would have music, have, have food, and they would construct the born. They had dances and social clubs, and they also put on a lot of plays. A lot of plays that came out, it simply became because Europeans loved plays, so they brought that over with them. They didn't have TV. They didn't have social media. They were simply put on plays. But there was also conflict in the colonies. As the colonies settled and spread across New England, they entered land that was already lived on by Native Americans. So I'm asking my question again, who was already here? The Native Americans. You can't find something that wasn't lost. You can't discover something that wasn't lost. The Native Americans were already here. So no, they did not find the colonies. And don't get me started on Christopher Columbus, because we've already had that lesson in, in school. So conflict in the colonies. The Native Americans and colonists began attacking each other villages. They had very different ideas about owning land. Native believed no one could own land, while colonists believed you owned it if you claimed it. Arguments began to lead to war, resulting in lives lost. Some tribes were nearly completely wiped out because the English settler had many advanced weapons. Remember, the English settlers, they had guns, but the, but the uh, Native Americans, they had more t weapons such as this. Keep in mind, the Native American did not have metals. The English brought that over. They used things that was from the land. So who had the upper hand? Very good. The colonists had the upper hand, even though, I'm going to say it again, it was not their land. They're fighting over land that did not belong to them in the first place. So take out a piece of paper and pause this video. And do not go to the next slide. I want you to pause this video. And on your piece of paper, I want you to answer these questions. And this came from your vocabulary. A plant used to make blue dye. What is that called? And number two, someone hired to watch slaves. What is that called? And number three, what is a settler from a distant country? Number four, what is land overseas owned by another country called? Number five, what is a worker from Africa? Number six, to punish people for their religious beliefs is called what? Number seven, what colonies was the bread basket colony? Which area was that? And number eight, how people make a living. So I'd like for you to pause this video and I would like for you to answer those eight questions. And then after you answer those questions, unpause and click to your next slide. So pause your video.
Okay, welcome back. Here are your answers. Number one, indigo. The question was a plant used to make blue dye. That is indigo. Number two, someone hired to watch slaves. That is an overseer. Number three, a settler from a distant country. That is a colonist. Number four, land overseas owned by another country. That is called a colony. Number five, a worker from Africa is a slave. Number six, to punish people for their religious beliefs is to persecute. Number seven, the breadbasket colonies were the middle colonies. And number eight, how people make a living. That is called your economy. So those are the answers from your vocabulary quiz. So how do you do? Thumbs up, thumbs down, or thumbs in the middle if you did so-so. So here is your assignment. I want you to go to Edpuzzle and look at this 3 minute and 48 second video on 13 American colonies. And it's actually a pretty good video. Then I would like for you to go to Kid Blog. Answer these two, four, six questions. You can refer back to the video if you need, but do not, I repeat, do not copy and paste your responses from the internet. I need to know what came out of your head. So go to Edpuzzle, look at that video, and go to Kid Blog and answer those six questions. In New England, I'm asking what religion was in control of Massachusetts and what was the soil like? The middle colony, I want to know three, cop, three crops and name four colonies in the middle colony. And number uh, the third section, the southern colony, what did the plantations grow? And who worked the plantations from sunup to sundown? So that's your assignment in your kid blog. And do not, I repeat, copy and paste from the internet. Come out of your brain. I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow will be Wednesday. We will have an experiment, and it's going to be an experiment utilizing salt. So this actually an experiment that you can do at home. See you tomorrow, fifth graders.